Here's part seven of our conversation with Bill Champlin. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Where was Robert Lamb during, I mean, when Foster came in, I remember the first thing, and I enjoyed Robert Lamb's early stuff a lot. And I remember going, like, he co-wrote one, and he co-wrote another, and he's, where is he? Like, I, he was not, it, it was like, where did he go? Well, there were a lot of, lot of guys at different times were dealing with treatment, you know, drug treatment. And Robert was one of them, too. And I think he had a little bit harder time finally getting in front of it. Uh, and right, that was around, around the time I got in there. So, uh, and I don't think he ever, he said, what do you need two keyboard players for? He said, you need one of them who can play the music that you're recording and to sing, to, you know, mostly Terry's stuff, you know. But and then later on, it was like, hey, can you sound more like Terry? I said, no. I said, this is, you know, there's only, there's a certain point where, you know, believe me, Terry was listening to me when he, when he, you know, before he started recording, you know what I mean? he knew who I was. He was, he was checking out my style. So don't, don't turn me around. I mean, so there's a kind of a thing that everybody in the band has to sound like somebody else, except for Robert. And then, you know, as time went on, you know, uh, you know, Jason and I did so many other projects, you know, we did the, uh, that whole a- acapella album that we released in Japan is a good piece of music. I mean, we really got into that. It was Joseph Williams and I, and uh, so we, we, for every minute, those guys had spent in the studio, we had spent 100. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just in general, you know, oh, we've been making records for this long. I said, yeah, those records. I've been making records, that record and that record and that record and that record and that record. And, you know, sometimes the, the craft of recording is, uh, is done best by those who do it a lot. That's why there were so many great big session guys. One of the reasons why Lukather played on virtually everybody's record for a long time. And he would probably still be after that, other than the fact that the Toto had to hit the road. So, you know, then, then it was Dan Huff was playing a lot. Mike Landau's, you know, Mike Landau played on a lot of Chicago records. The what? band, the band guy usually didn't play. I mean, Dwayne Bailey was an amazing soloist, an unbelievable musician in some sort of way. Not real good in the studio, not real good playing behind new songs and stuff like that. And that's and in a lot of ways, we just we went ahead and just used Bruce Geitch for the for the backing on the on the big band album, which I actually like mostly because the uh, the big band arranger. I mean, they had the, the three Chicago guys in the middle, and then they had this full big band over here. And Shelly Berg was the arranger of that stuff, and he just, he hipped up the record pretty seriously. How, how much ahead are you? I mean, beyond COVID, like you just mentioned, the whole project that, you know, your fans are going to go, oh, wow, this is exciting. But how, yeah. I mean, things must drop on your lap more than the normal f- folk. I mean. Well, you know, sometimes somebody will say, well, I need you to sing backgrounds on a, on this thing in Nashville for a, this girl who's doing a Karen Carpenter thing. I said, send me a, send me a, just a, a, you know, a music with her singing on it. And then one with her not singing on it. And I'll fly them into a Pro Tools thing and I'll cut some backgrounds. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of work like that, just where it's just me by myself. And I go knock off some stuff, whether it's a lead vocal or a background vocal, or even, even write some stuff. But I mean, a lot of that long before COVID, I was doing it because, you know, the guys I'm writing for may be in Sweden or they may be in Canada or they may be somewhere where we're not really going to get together that much, you wow. know. I so, and, I, and I've known, I've met a lot of people. I know there's a guy in, uh, that we just did a Christmas record just a little while back with Franklin McKay. Franklin's a, from Toronto. He's a, a songwriter from Toronto and his engineer is really good. And uh, they've, he wrote this really cool thing, asked me to sing it. I did. So it's, there's, there's just a lot of different stuff and it's kind of random. And I think that's probably what kept me busy more than that kind of thing kept me busy more between uh between solo albums you know and it was just Tamara that just said hey you got to do a solo album you you're you're slamming you're producing really good music you're making this stuff get up and shout you got a good team that you can go to it's time you know so I mean it, she she really talked me into doing it love lives on to me the, I heard that and went like, that's a head it's got that soaring vocal chorus tell me about that song we you know we originally did that for Wonderground. You know, we wrote it, Gary and Tamara and I wrote the song together. 
Uh, Tamara and I pretty much wrote the lyrics and actually Tamara came up with the melodies that were really good. And uh, I just put it on there because it's a really kind of pretty well-crafted ballad. It's a really good ballad. Mm-hmm. You know, we were going to put strings on it, but I, I just kind of at some point when I was doing the album, I went, yeah, I can get strings, but I kind of don't want to. You know, I mean, especially this day and age. Well, if it, get each string player to go into a little, you know, a little box on online and play their parts. And they went, I don't, I don't want to do that. It just, you know, I, I understand that, you know, that a lot of musicians are doing a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, Zoom bands playing together, but from their house. And, you know, I see them all. Everybody's in this little square box. <laughs> I just keep waiting for, here's a story about a man named Brady. <laughs> you know, I just keep going. This is the Brady Bunch. And, you know, at some point in the game, if this keeps going on, I'm going to have to cop to it myself. But I'd rather not. You know, a lot of people say, hey, you know, we have the ability now. You can have your musicians play on your record. Send it. I mean, Jason was doing some stuff for uh, I can't remember the producer's name. You know, backstage before we went on doing back doing bass bass parts. He said, Sh- "Could you guys? Sh- you know, said, could you do this in your hotel? Because you know, this is our back room for our gig. You know, and I just don't like that. I I kind of want to be there for everything. Mm-hmm. I just don't produce like that. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, Losing ground is that a political song, Bill Champlin? Just a little bit. Just a tad. I kind of wanted a track that was sort of gospel-y, one yeah. of those ba doom do do pop things, you know what I mean? And uh, Greg gave me one. His piano playing on it is just through the roof great. He's just a – and the organ, his organ playing on it was great. I mean, it's Matheson, once again. Greg Matheson's bad boy, serious bad boy. And he's, and he's like my, my little brother, you know what I mean? Or my big brother in some ways. You know, he's just – Greg's a bad. He's just one of the best musicians and, and producers and arrangers and co-writers that I've ever had. 